Good afternoon. Thank you for coming today. Um, Ron has uh, set up my talk very well. I am very interested in storms of various kinds, and I uh, specialize in tropical cyclones. Um, New England's a great place to be if you're a storm lover, uh, for the reasons that Ron gave. We're, we live in an area of exceptional temperature contrast. You know, in the winter, you go 600 miles to the northwest, you're in the deep freeze of the Canadian Shield. 600 miles to the southeast, you're in balmy Bermuda. Um, those temperature contrasts are what make winter storms and give us a stormy climate. It might be great if you're a weather lover. It's not so great if you're insur an insurer. And I don't think it's an accident that a lot of uh, insurance companies in the United States got their start in New England, and a lot of them are still headquartered here. So, of course, naturally, it's interesting to ask the question, what's going to happen to these various storms as the climate changes? Um, we know to some extent the answers for certain kinds of storms, and we don't, unfortunately, yet know the answers for other kinds of storms. I'm going to try to give you a quick summary of how that goes. Um, well, winter storms are a, a big concern. Uh, all of you experience those. You know what they do to the region economically. Schools close, businesses close. Um, this is a, a region that, this is a, a phenomenon that we don't actually understand well in terms of climate change. Um, there are arguments that you can make scientifically why these might become more of a threat. There are also arguments equally plausible why they may become less. And, and so we're not in a good position to know. But as Ron Smith told you, in general, we expect precipitation in New England, whether it's rain or snow, to increase in the winter. So it's not entirely uh, paradoxical. It wouldn't be paradoxical if we saw an increase in the snowfall uh, in spite of warmer temperatures. Uh, another phenomenon that's of interest to many parts of the United States, even here in New England, are severe thunderstorms and attendant phenomena like tornadoes. There even have been tornadoes here or near New Haven. Um, uh, it's not as much of a problem, of course, in New England as it is in the Midwest, but uh, it is an occasional problem. And hailstorms. Now, you don't hear very much about hailstorms, but unless you're in the insurance business, and that, then you hear a lot about them. The hail causes an enormous amount of damage in the United States every year. And, um, uh, Senator Murphy uh, told you uh, quite correctly and interestingly that, that weather phenomena in general and climate oscillations can have big influence on uh, political developments. So hail uh, plays a role here too. For example, there's an argument to be made that the proximate cause of the French Revolution was a pair of hailstorms that devastated the wheat crop in France the summer before the revolution. Of course, it had deeper political roots than that, but but uh, a starving population is a pretty good recipe for revolution. So we worry about that. But um, we don't know very much at this moment about how this phenomenon, severe thunderstorms, hailstorms, and tornadoes might respond to climate change. It's uh, something we're all working on as a community, but the only honest thing to tell you right now is we really don't know how these storms might change. Now, to get to something that we have worked a bit more is uh, on hurricanes. Now, I'm talking to you uh, in a few days, on the 21st of September, will mark the 75th anniversary of the great New England hurricane of 1938. There are a few people around who remember this, not too many left. This was an absolutely devastating event for New England. It killed more than 600 people. Now, in those days, in 1938, we had a far less... Uh, efficient weather service, and the 1938 storm arrived in New England with absolutely no warning whatsoever, something that's unimaginable today, so there have been improvements along those lines. This is the track, this shows you the track of the New England hurricane with dates in September, so it started, as many do, off the coast of Africa. The colors show you a measure of the intensity, so red is Saffir Simpson Category 5, uh, so it's marching along at a nice stately pace. Here it is on the 20th of September off of the north coast of Florida on the 21st. And look what happens. In one day, it shot up from off of Florida into Vermont, okay? Uh, hit New England without warning on the 21st and caused really uh, absolutely uh, staggering devastation. This is what downtown Providence, Rhode Island looked like in the midst of the hurricane. 
you don't have to have a lot of imagination to think, uh, well, you know, if that could happen in 1938, it could happen today. You can see how much water was in the city. This is all the storm surge uh, from Narragansett Bay that flooded the city of Providence. It happened at least twice before that we know about. In 1815, Providence was completely flooded by a hurricane and also in 1635. New England has had three really catastrophic hurricanes in its history and some fairly notable ones, most recently, of course, Sandy. This is what the south coast of Long Island looked at like a few days after the 1938 hurricane. These are all the remains of big mansions. And if you were to fly a small airplane over that region today, of course, you'd see that they'd all been built back and more. So we've simply set ourselves up for that to happen. This would be a problem, I would say, for New England, and in fact, for most of the United States, whether the climate changes or not, we're kind of underprepared for this kind of catastrophe. Now, in the case of hurricanes, we've started to learn how to use physics uh, to get a grasp on how these storms might change as the climate change. My group at MIT kind of specializes in this, and one of our approaches is to uh, generate from the output of climate models uh, thousands and thousands, actually tens of thousands of artificial hurricanes, if you will. Here is an example. Whoops, I've gone ahead here. I haven't gone far enough. Here is an example of hurricanes downscaled, not from a climate model, but from, a, from an actual observed climate data set. The colors are a measure of the intensity. You can see the tracks most of you are familiar with in the Atlantic. Here are the storms that influence the Western Pacific region, Southern Hemisphere, and so on. And we can uh, filter those tracks to look at particular places, like here in New Haven. We can look at uh, 10,000 10, tracks or so of storms that affect this region of Connecticut. And we can look at all kinds of quantities, not just wind, but rain. And as uh, Ron mentioned, and which was certainly true in the 1938 hurricane, rain's a big problem. Um, you don't have to think back very far to Irene to understand the problems that freshwater flooding pose for New England. Here is one of these synthetic tracks, and the contouring here shows you the accumulated rainfall in millimeters over the life of the storm. A lot of the big storms in New England, like the 38 storm, are moving very fast, so it doesn't rain very long, but nevertheless, you get rather spectacular rainfall totals in some of these events. So we can look at not just how wind changes, but rain and storm surges. So we use these uh, synthetic hurricanes to we couple them to something called a hydrodynamic surge model. It shows you the grids of uh, two such models superimposed. Uh, looking at the region around uh, Manhattan and New York, we can drive uh, tens of thousands of surge events and start to look at their statistics. Uh, this is from a paper we published uh, somewhat prophetically about six months before Sandy, showing the return periods, sort of a measure of the frequency of storm surges at the battery in New York of this magnitude. And uh, this is the return period in years. So we would have said that a magnitude uh, of three meters, which is what Sandy surge was, might occur every 700 years. So one thing we would say about Sandy is either we were just very unlucky, we happened to see a once in 700 year event, which is entirely possible, or the climate may have changed in some ways to make those storms more likely. We don't know which of those two is the case. But we can run this sort of downscaling on uh, climate model projections for future climates. And you don't need to worry about these hieroglyphics here. These are just the names of five different climate models that we used to do this. We compare the historical period, 1950 to 2005, with the same scenario that Ron Smith was telling you about RCP 8.5. And uh, here is uh, the return periods according to one of these models for the peak wind within 100 kilometers of where you're sitting right now, New Haven, that's about 60 miles or so. And um, these are the return periods for the current climate estimated from this model. These are the return periods from the future climate and you can see in general they go down, which means that the frequency of events of different magnitudes goes up. So, a storm of 80 knots of wind uh, might have occurred every few thousand years, six or seven thousand years in the current climate, might
might occur every 900 years or so in the future climate. That's one model. Of course, when you look at different models, you get different answers, and that's a reflection of how uncertain this business uh, still is. We can still do the same thing for storm surges at New York. Um, this is looking at four different climate models. The black is the current climate. The red and blue are projections of future climates. And in all four cases, uh, because we've also included one meter projected sea level rise, which as Ron Smith mentioned, even without changes in storms would contribute to larger storm surges, we get uh, big increases, unfortunately, in the frequency of big surges as well in hurricanes. So let me try to wrap things up. Um, climate modeling does show increased risk for strong hurricanes. Heavier uh, hurricane-related rainfall and storm surges made uh, worse by rising sea level. Not as much is known, unfortunately, about the risks of other phenomena, such as blizzards, which are a big deal in New England, severe thunderstorms, tornadoes, and hail, etc. And I'll leave you with those thoughts. Thank you. <laughs>